MARSOC, better known as the Marine Corps Special Operation Command. Let's go. Phase one of ANS is a 23-day training program. It's a it's a program that's designed to to identify the candidates that have the best chance of being successful in phase two. Phase one is is a very physical course. We do things like the Marine Corps PFT. We do ruck runs ranging from right now eight to twelve miles. We also swim. In addition to that, there's calisthenic cards. We do pull-ups, push-ups. In the description below, I'll put some links here, but the minimum PFT is a 235. If you're going with a 235, you're not probably going to make it. Unless you're the Iron Marshmallow. Uh, you're just not going to make it when you're doing this kind of stuff. So, for all you devil dogs out there, 235 is going to be probably the bottom end of a decent PFT. So, you want to be hitting 300s to go there because if you're getting these ruck runs, the PT, the stress, if you're a fleet marine and haven't been keeping in shape, this is something... These devil dogs have to be locked on and hardcore ready to go. Sit up squats, things like that. Uh, we do do work with, with ammo cans. Uh, and then there's combinations of, of running and, and exercises. Uh, so the things that make candidates successful is coming prepared and, and taking the taking the time and, and doing the, the due diligence that, that they deserve uh, to show up on day one very prepared. Phase one is not a preparation course for for phase two. Phase one is, is the beginning of selection. We see candidates being successful that have successfully completed the 10 week training guide. I figure a lot of these guys haven't really run the O course like they did in boot camp. Most of them haven't. You know, most of them probably be in infantry. They're not running the O course like they are in MARSOC. They're not even humping and training like they are in MARSOC selection. So just from looking at it, some people had a hard time in the O course in boot camp, just some of these obstacles. So. The amount of prep you got to do to get ready for this is going to be substantial for most guys. You have the freaks of nature that can do it, and getting ready to run an O course timed is going to be another challenge. Not to mention these long ruck runs and ruck marches. The application you download on your phone, and you follow that training plan. That plan has been designed to aid candidates and give them the required skill to continue on. The mental aspects that are identified in first phase are, are simple things, and they're normal tasks that are expected of everyday Marines. Things like showing up on time, things like having the gear that you're supposed to have, following directions. I think those are the core pieces that you look at normal, everyday Marines as being, you know, squared away and prepared and taking these. You're not going there as a shit bag, right? Your command, let's say you're at 0311, is not going to send you this course for your shit bag. You have to be top shelf dude because they know you're going to get recycled or fail. You're not going to even make it through selection. Not even get to the point of recycling, right? This is just to get you selected to go to the operator course. That's what we're talking about here. So like all these trainings, you got to be top shelf right off the bat, physically fit, and let's get to the water. Taking these pieces seriously, like those things also transfer into being a good operator. But in order to be successful, you need to be committed to whatever cause it is. Without that commitment, without being able to work through adversities and to persevere through the rain and the snow and cold feet, you know, you're not going to be successful uh, in a very competitive organization. It's commonly said uh, inside the organization that you shouldn't make a decision while you're going uphill. Exactly. The decision to, to see things through and to, and to persevere should be made before you start the task. Talking to a lot of my buddies, they were in Recon, Force Recon, and what became MARSOC 2005 and implemented in 07. The water is what trips most of these guys up. Whether it be the bud stuff everybody's watched, or this, the water is what gets people most of the time. You know, it's, it's one of those tough things. It's hard to get over and you can't train for it. Either you like it or you don't. MARSOC operators are seasoned, mature, and physically fit. Driven critical thinkers who get things right the first time.
small unit tactics and, and higher responsibility level is one of the things that appealed to me. I wanted to be making decisions, and in Marsoc, you're able to do that. What is he talking about, right? He's talking about being, let's say, a corporal, and you're with a small element, a small team of folks. You're not with a big platoon. You're not with a big company. So these guys are operating in more independently than any fleet marine in the infantry. That's what attracts a lot of guys, and that's what also a lot of guys aren't good at. They got to be responsible themselves and their teammates. With that smaller unit capability, you bring a different cohesiveness. You bring in 60 to 90 to 120 individuals who are all capable of operating independently, doing their own things, whether it's working on a car, working on a gun, or setting up a satellite communication system, yet building cohesiveness to make that all run seamlessly together. You can see why the pipeline's so long, right? You gotta figure out how to do SATCOM. You gotta figure out how to blend in. You gotta figure out all these things that as a regular infantry guy, you're not trained to do. So to get these guys walled and everything that's necessary to get from point A to point B, then figuring out how to do it, you gotta have a huge skill set. That's why there is another point to this on the ASVAB, um, a GT score. I believe it's 110. And take a look in the description, but definitely something you gotta be prepped for this kind of selection process just because you're not out training in the field doesn't mean you're not educating yourself so a lot of the guys you know educate themselves continuously look at the news continuously read books continuously read intel summaries and try to stay abreast of what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis we focus a lot on communication skills because of the people we interact with Within the SF community, you're able to interact with ambassadors, prime ministers, generals, colonels. You have to be able to give these guys confidence. You have to be able to properly articulate the mission so this general feels comfortable for this MSOT to be out and alone and unafraid. Yeah, so you figure their interaction is going to be different than your typical corporal, right? Typical corporal in a squad, dealing with a squad leader, platoon sergeant. These guys are going to be so independent. They're going to be dealing with a whole different level of stuff, hence these long pipelines, these SF guys. Because there's a level of excellence that you want to attain, a level of existence that I believe a Mossack operator has. You know, it's just this constant seeking of self-improvement. Yesterday was yesterday. What can I gain from today? Mossack brings that to the table, this very aggressive approach to how can I become better today? An enemy fighter had uh, engaged us from our flank, and so myself and another Marine on the rooftop were shot. Uh, third Marine was able to roll off without getting shot, and so immediately a bullet went into my shoulder and into my spine. So I just felt a pulsing sensation in my back and kind of slumped over. Saw Ricky, who was the sergeant to my left. He had been shot through the neck and was face down on the rooftop. Uh, tried to triage myself pick myself up and realize that nothing below my chest was working. And so. so the amount of direct action stuff they get involved with is going to be far outweigh what it is if you're a typical infantry guy. And again, talking to friends of mine, they're high up in the head shed and recon elements. They talk about these guys and revere them. I mean, hardcore dudes and the amount of stuff, you got to be 100 miles an hour all the time in this kind of unit. They got on the radio, called my guys, told them that I'd been hit and that Ricky had been hit and uh, they sprung into action. What you'll find in the MARSOC community is that the mission is planned not just by the team chief or team leader, it's planned by everybody collectively. Maritime interdiction, also known as visit, board, search, and seizure, is one of the capabilities of MARSOC. It includes primarily a boat team as well as helicopter assault force. Mind you, this is all happening in the open ocean, uh, usually in periods of darkness under adverse sea states. Marines are on ships all over the world at any point in time. So these guys are going to be, if there's something going on, they don't have to send a plane to the group of SF guys somewhere. They've got these Marines on ships. They're ready to roll. Question for you guys. You guys have ever encountered these MARSOC guys or know any of them? Or got any guys in the pipeline right now? Force recon guys or recon guys going out for MARSOC or even just basic infantry guys trying out for MARSOC? Put that in the comments. You need to be able to work well and cooperate well with others to the point People can trust you, uh, not only with you know the little things, but something as important as big as your life. Our SOC takes pride in that we're Marines. 
something that comes with that mindset is a desire to consistently see the next challenge, consistently seek self-improvement. It's that next step to continue doing more. The strength of the pack is the wolf, and the strength of the wolf is the pack. What was kind of the standard mission that you would execute? The standard practice that we would do is uh, we'd go out and set ambush patrols. Uh, try to find guys who were coming to kill us and kill them before they got us. And then there, how often would you actually get contact once you were out set up in an ambush position? I think almost, almost 100% of the time. These guys are going to be in it more than your average grunt, right? They're going to the hottest spot the Marine Corps wants to put somebody in or to get the mission accomplished. So this is the kind of stuff we think of other SF units it's the Marines component of it, and they're gonna push them a thousand miles an hour to get there. If you're going to try, go all the way. Otherwise, don't even start. <laughs> if you're going to try, go all the way. It could mean not eating for three or four days. It could mean freezing on a park bench. It could mean jail. It could mean derision. Mockery, isolation. After selection, after the training, to include, they're going to have Sears School, Scuba School, Jump School. They're perpetually training, is my point. So, probably Halo, Hey Ho. These guys are going to always be the cutting edge, whether they're deployed or in training. Isolation is the gift. All the others are a test of your endurance, of how much you really want to do it. And you'll do it, despite rejection and the worst odds. I found most of the guys that are rock star athletes, 300 PFTs, right? The biggest problem I found them going into this type of thing is going to be the water. And they said, well, I like, I'm fine with the water. Until they do this, right? Until they're surf, surf tortured, put through the ringer, the amount of stuff they got to do to get there. As the water trips a lot of guys up. And they realize they just don't want to be there. They don't just want to do this job. I'm going to go back to what they were doing. Because these guys are going fast and furious all the time. Whether it's deployment, training, or even off-duty. I'm sure these guys go fast and furious. If you're going to try, go all the way. There is no other feeling like that. You will be alone with the gods. And the nights will flame with fire. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Like All this guy. the way. All the way. Yeah, the best advice is just, just do it. The worst thing you can ever do is not. And yeah. When when times get tough, and you might, and and understand that you're you might fail, and yeah, this is the kind of stuff you want to do. You're gonna regret not doing it. You got to test your metal to see if you can do this. Cause it's not made for everybody. That's why there's a huge attrition rate. Most people, it's not for them. Even first class PFT hardcore jarheads, they get to this and they go, I don't want to do this training for a year. I don't do this mission for the rest of my life. It's a young man's game. That's for sure. That's okay. Today will be different. If you guys like the video, please share with your buddies. Thanks for watching.